Hello everyone, welcome back. I am Fer and today I'm going to tell you the story of Amelio Robles Avila, a transgender hero of the Mexican Revolution and the first transgender person to be officially recognized by the Mexican government. This video, like all my videos, is brought to you by my Patreons, Otto Matiosum, Matt Zweig, Daniel H. McGillivray, Marlo Brown and Valerie Hyde. All my Patreons, thank you very much. First, let's set the stage. Starting in 1810, Mexico had a 70-year period of near-constant war. It started with the war for independence, but it continued with revolts, civil wars and invasions. Sure, there were brief periods of peace in between, but they were the exception. This ended when Porfirio Diaz became president in 1884. He was actually a Native American from the Mixtec people. He was a very competent general and politician, and he brought peace and economic prosperity to Mexico at the cost of cruelty and ruling with an iron fist. Everyone and anyone who even questioned his government was killed, especially other Native Americans. In fact, his catchphrase was, kill them now, find out later. This was Mexico when Amelio Robles Avila was born in 1889 in Xochipala, in the state of Guerrero, to a wealthy family. He was assigned female at birth and named Amelia Robles Avila. Quick side note, in Spanish the ending A is strongly associated with femininity, while the ending O is strongly associated with masculinity, and you can use this to make names either male or female. For example, my name is Fernando, and it ends with an O. But Fernanda ends with an A, and it is a female name. Other examples are Alejandro and Alejandra, Daniel and Daniela, Claudio and Claudia. You get the idea. This explains why later Amelio would change his name by simply changing the A to an O. Although I guess Emilio would have been an option too. As a child, Amelio was very interested in horses and guns, becoming an excellent rider and marksman, but there isn't too much to say about him until the year 1911, when he was 22 years old. By this point, Porfirio had been president for nearly 30 years. And sure, there were elections, but everyone knew they were rigged, and Porfirio controlled the results so he would always win. But then, Ignacio y Madero started his political movement. This is also very complex, but put simply, Madero was an extremely rich person, and he wanted Porfirio to step down and let Mexico be a democracy again, to let Mexicans vote for whomever they wanted as president, maybe Madero himself. Around this time, many Madres clubs were formed all over Mexico. Here people would get together to discuss politics and activism to bring democracy back to Mexico. And one of these clubs was actually started by Amelio and his friends. Madero got Porfirio to admit that Mexico was ready for free and fair elections. And thus, in the next elections, Madero was actually a candidate. And by all accounts, he won on a landslide, uh, only for Porfirio to go back on his words, falsify the results and declare himself victorious. It became clear that the only way to end with Porfirio's rule was through violence. And thus, Madero's sympathizers rose in rebellion all over Mexico. And this was the start of the Mexican Revolution. The revolution was a very spontaneous and improvised movement. Groups of rebels would start working together and coalesce into armies around charismatic leaders. One of these leaders was Emiliano Zapata. Formerly, he was just a man working on a plantation, but his charisma and especially his idealism led him to become the leader of the Southern Liberation Army, which Amelio joined. Back in his town, Amelio's abilities with riding horses and shooting guns 
were just seen as an oddity, a curiosity. He was just seen as a tomboy. But in the army, those abilities were highly appreciated. Now, remember that by this point, Amelio was still living as a woman, and it might surprise you that a woman joined the Mexican Revolution, but in fact, it was quite common. Many women joined the revolutionary forces, and a few of them even became coronels, such as Carmen Alaniz, Juana Gutierrez, Esperanza Gonzalez, among others. But make no mistake, their society was still extremely sexist. It was just that in times of war, they had to accept talent wherever it came from, and thus they could tolerate women being soldiers, sergeants, and even coronels, but never generals. These women were nicknamed Adelitas, and in fact, there's a very popular song about them. Y si Adelita se fuera con otro... Uh, links in the description. Initially, Amelio was a messenger or a scout, but soon enough he was involved in battles and skirmishes in which he was able to prove his abilities in combat and leadership. Soon he was given the rank of coronel. He became part of the special forces of the Southern Liberation Army and he was sent into special secret missions. Eventually, Amelio ended up commanding around 300 other soldiers, and according to his journal, he and his men fought in around 70 battles and skirmishes against the government forces. In short, he had a lot of adventures during the revolution. They won many battles, they lost a few, he was wounded in battle six times, more about that later, and he was even captured once. But let's take a moment to take all of the in. In a very short time, Amelio had become an important and respected member of the Southern Liberation Army. He was put in charge of other soldiers, he commanded them in battle, and he did it successfully, all while still living as a woman in an extremely sexist society. For all these reasons, he was respected and appreciated by Emiliano Zapata and the other revolutionary leaders, and they even defended him against the few people who didn't respect him. It's no wonder then that when asked about how he felt when joining the revolution, Amelio simply said, absolutely free. Now, at this point, I should probably explain more about the Mexican Revolution to give you a better understanding of the conflict Amelio fought in. The problem is that the Mexican Revolution was a long and convoluted conflict, with shifting alliances making a simple explanation impossible. I would need a whole series of videos to explain it. Crash course? Call me. Just to give you a taste, Madero actually won! He deposed Porfirio! Well, then one of Porfirio's henchmen, Victoriano Huerta, took control of the army, killed Madero, and then became president. Then the revolution basically restarted, but now against Huerta. The problem was that now the four or five different revolutionary armies couldn't agree on a single leader. Venustiano Carranza, the governor of Coahuila, tried to unify the revolutionary armies, but it was basically impossible. So right after they deposed Huerta, all the revolutionary leaders started fighting against each other, becoming presidents, getting killed, and somehow it all ended when a school teacher became president? But he was an atheist, so then the Christian war started. <sighs> Do you see what I mean? But let's go back to Amelio. When Venustiano Carranza became president and created the 1917 constitution, which is the one Mexico still has to this day, many people considered the revolution to be over, including Amelio. So Amelio and his men presented themselves to the Mexican government to become part of the official Mexican army. But remember that the conflict was not over. Soon there was a revolt by counter-revolutionary forces, and Amelio was among the soldiers sent to defeat them. And they did. The problem was that Amelio got seriously injured in battle. And this seems to be a turning point for his life, because this seems to be the point where he decided to fuck everything and just live the life he wanted to live. 
When he recovered, he went to his friends and colleagues and told them not to call him Amelia anymore, that now his name was Amelio. Previously, he had been allowed to wear masculine clothes because many soldier women did, but he decided to always wear masculine clothes, even after he retired and became a civilian. There are a few reports that suggest that Amelio had girlfriends during the revolution, but after the revolution was over, he met Angela Torres. They fell in love, they got married, and they even adopted a daughter together, Regula Robles Torres. He even joined a political party before women were even allowed to vote. In short, he was living as a man which was exactly how he wanted to live. Let's think about how monumental this was. Amelio had never even heard the word transgender in his life. In fact, no one had. It was invented one year before in Germany. Concepts like gender identity had not even been defined. No one had even dared to imagine a world where gay and transgender people could be respected, much less free to live the lives they wanted to live. And yet, all Amelio knew was that he was a man. He had faced death and he was done living as a woman. He was probably able to live like this and to do all these things because many of his friends from the army ended up in important political positions because his service to the revolution was undeniable and because he had a habit of pointing his gun at anyone who questioned his gender identity. He even got several important recognitions by the army, like the Legion of Honor, which is reserved only for those who have done significant contributions to the defense of Mexico. But he still wasn't legally recognized as a man. He tried to get legally recognized by falsifying his birth certificate, be trans to crime, but it didn't work because in many documents he was still listed as female. Official recognition finally happened because Amelio sent a letter to the army requesting they fix a mistake in the registry of veterans where he was listed with his female name and as a woman. He had to insist for nearly 20 years. But in 1974, the official record was finally fixed. And in all official documents, Amelio was listed as a man, thus becoming the first transgender person to be legally recognized by the Mexican government. It's unlikely that anyone in the government or the army understood what being transgender meant, but I think they just saw how important this was for Amelio, they saw that he had been living as a man for decades, and they decided that even if they didn't understand it, they should just accept him as a man, which is a very healthy attitude to have. As you probably imagined, Amelio is already dead. He died in 1984 at the age of 95. I hope that he died calmly and satisfied. He lived exactly as he wanted to live. He fought for democracy and defeated a tyrant, and he fought an even harder fight to be recognized as the person that he truly was. Both of these fights probably seemed impossible to win at the time, but he did it anyway and took the risk to be free. That's a lesson we can all learn, cisgender or transgender. Sadly, we have not learned enough about the legacy of Amelio. Today, many Mexicans struggle to have the same rights and freedom that Amelio enjoyed nearly 70 years ago to marry the person he loved to adopt a child and to be legally recognized as the person he truly was. The same rights that every straight cisgender person enjoys. People shouldn't have to be war heroes or help depose dictators in order to have their rights. They should just have them. 
that's why they are right. I hope that here in Mexico, we can be better, that we can learn from our own example and we can allow Mexicans to just live the lives they want to live. But we have a lot of work to do to get there. I mean, when Guerrero, the state that Amelio is from, wanted to honor his memory with a museum, they used the wrong name and they called Amelio a woman. The same happened when they wanted to name a school after him. In fact, while researching this story, I found several articles in government websites that list Amelio as a woman and they put him among important women in the revolution. I mean, sure, he attained an important rank while living as a woman, but it should come with a big asterisk. When he's mentioned in the news, back then and to this day, he is often portrayed as an eccentric woman, perhaps a botched lesbian, which he was not. He made that really clear. Lesbians don't spend decades trying to be legally recognized as men. I guess we just have to keep fighting and keep being free. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe and give me a like. And look, I love making these videos. I love researching deeply a topic, everything I can, and make videos about it. And you people certainly seem to like them, like the one I did about chess, uh, the one I did about Speedy Gonzalez, the one about the, I did the Hittite language. And I want to make more of these videos. And I want to make more about like LGBT history uh, and games uh, uh, and languages and all of this stuff. And if you want to help me, to, if you want to watch those videos, please consider joining my Patreon. There are special videos just for Patreons. Uh, there are polls where you can tell me what videos you would like me to do next. And if you want to just help me once, if you want to give me a one-time donation, uh, you can send me money through PayPal. I'm going to put all the information in the description. And uh, yeah, well, thank you very much. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to bring you many more videos that, that you guys love and enjoy.